She chose God as her best friend when growing up. Now, part of the Bride of Christ and commissioned by the Father, Minister Charmaine Noel carries the good news of the Gospel to all the lands. Minister Noel and the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, welcomes you on the Highway of Holiness. God told Minister Charmaine Noel to prophesy into the lives of the people so that they may be carriers of His glory and walk in the supernatural with mighty miracles, signs and wonders following. Hello everyone and welcome to our program Highway of Holiness where always it's a pleasure to be in your company to speak the very heart and the mind of God to you wonderful people. Well today you are going to be excited because I'm going to be speaking about understanding prophecy so that we will know the difference between that which is of the Lord and that which is not of the Lord. I believe it's very important because there's just so much out there, uh, so much information that we don't, want to, we don't want to be misinformed as it pertains to the prophetic. So I'm going to begin by just giving you what, what prophecy really is. Well, I, let me just start by saying to you that prophecy can be defined as a declaration of God's word, of the word of God being revealed, divinely revealed uh, to mankind. And, you know, it's so interesting that prophecy can be predictive or it can be a proclamation, a divine proclamation. And so when we come to even understanding prophecy in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, we discover that there are really about five words that will indicate the word prophecy or will suggest the very, the very name of the prophet. And what I, want to, what I want to do today is I want to go into the, to the Old Testament and the Hebrew and then go into the Greek and let us discover what this word really means and what it is, what does it mean to be a prophet as opposed to one who can prophesy. Well, today we're going to discover that the very word Nava, the word Nava in the, in the Hebrew speaks of prophecy. It speaks of an ability to prophesy. And, you know, it's so interesting because even in this word, it really means the ability to, to bubble up or gush forth. You know, it, there, there are instances in, in Jeremiah where Jeremiah really, it's, it's shut up in his bones that he has to speak what God has to say. And, you know, that has happened to me personally on so many occasions where literally the word of God, is, it, it bubbles up in, inside of me and it is something where you must speak forth. And that's what that word Nava actually refers to. But, you know, it's so interesting because the word Nava is also used in, in, in when we're speaking about worship us unto the Lord. Because in 1 Chronicles, I want to just read one verse for you. In 1 Chronicles chapter 25, we read in verse 2 where the sons of Asaph, was, they were worshipping and even in their worship, it was in the form of prophecy. And so the Bible says of the sons of Asaph, and of course they gave the names of the sons, the sons of Asaph were under the direction of Asaph who prophesied according to the order of the king. And so what we are looking at here is the very word Nava being used as it pertains to prophecy when it comes to worship, when it comes to singing songs as unto the Lord. You know, there are so many times that I have had the experience where new songs will come forth. Actually, let me say to you, almost every time we gather, you know, even as a ministry, a new song will come forth. But the very new songs that will come forth will be in the form of prophecy. So prophecy that comes out of worship is something that is absolutely unto the Lord. And I do encourage people to, those who have the prophetic unction, to begin to worship God. And even as you worship the Lord, uh, many times, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you and you will begin to really declare what God has to say, but you will do it in song. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, when we come now even onto another word that is used in the Old Testament is the word Navi. When we look at the word Navi, it actually refers to the word prophet. Uh, you know, the, uh, one or two times it was referring to prophecy, but generally it refers to, to the word prophet. And, and so we see where it is one who is able, uh, you know, to, to predict or one who, who is able to declare that which is of the future. And that is what that word generally means even in the Hebrew. But the 
there are two words that is used in the, in the Old Testament, and it's used almost interchangeably, as it were. And it is the word Jose and the word Roe. When we look at the word Jose and Roe, even in the Hebrew, what we are discovering is that the word speaks of one who is a seer. The one who is the seer in the Old Testament is not one who we would look at now in the 21st century. Because if I were to refer to you as a, a somebody who is a seer, generally your interpretation would be one who is a fortune teller or a palm reader or a stargazer. And those are the people who the Bible calls are really abominations as unto the Lord. But in the Old Testament, when the Bible speaks of Roe, or when the Bible speaks of Jose, they are actually referring to that which is of the Lord. In other words, it is someone who, are, who has the ability to enter into a divine revelation of what God has to say, but they receive it as visions. Uh, so therefore, again, as the, as, the, as the name implies, one who is able to see into the future. And you know, it is, it is interesting that even when we look in the Bible and we look at uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9, I want to I wanna read this because it's important for us to understand the difference. And the Bible says, formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus, come, let us go uh, to the seer. For he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. And so we see we have the word, you know, seer and prophet would be used interchangeably. But generally, it is referring to that one who has the ability to have vision, to really look at something and God will give you a picture and an image. And out of that image, you can tell what is going to happen. You know, that happens so many times for me. There are many times when the Lord will actually take me and show me nations. And I will go in and see things that are going to take place in nations. And that is, and that is the gift of the seer. And so we come now to the final word as, as used in the Old Testament. And that word is the word masa. And the word masa, we can find that in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1. And we know that when we refer to Proverbs 31, generally it is speaking about, you know, a woman of God. And so that word, that word uh, uh, masa actually means a burden. Now, let me say to you this. It comes so often for those who are called into the prophetic where the word of God becomes as almost a burden that has to be released. And so, and so that is what that word actually you know, refers to. So it was, it was the words of, of King Lemuel and really the, the words that were taught by the mother. It, it became as even a burden. And so I do, I do encourage some of us. Sometimes you feel and so you, you got this word from the Lord and the word is almost like a burden and you, and, and you just have to release it. You have to speak this word. Well, it is that word that is a massa. That is what that word means there as it, really, as it relates to prophecy, as, re, as it relates to Bible prophecy because the word is used interchangeably as burden or prophecy. But, you know, it is so interesting, guys, because when we come now even into the New Testament, because in the New Testament, we now look at the Greek translation, even of the word prophet. Now, the Greek translation of the word prophet is prophetes. When we look at that word, it is one who is an interpreter of oracles, one who has an ability to expose that which is hidden, hidden things. You know what that means? It means it is one who is moved by the Spirit of God to look at the Scriptures, look at the Word of God, and begin to bring forth revelation of that which is written. You know, so many times when I go into the Scriptures and I read the literal words, never do, do, does the Lord really just, just give me the literal interpretation. So many times, layers and layers are peeled off of the Scriptures that I get into the depth of the revelation of the Word of God. And that is the, that is the, 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 the office of the prophet in the New Testament is one who has the ability to reveal hidden or secret things. 
He really brings forth the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is something where the, where the prophet, the prophetess, has the ability to speak of future events, you know, based on the revelation of the word of God. I think that is something that is so important for us to know because the true prophet is one who is able to foretell and one who is able to foretell the future. What am I speaking about? Let me, let me just make it clear. Because some of us go to a prophet and you may want the prophet to, to tell you of your future. And, and, you know, and sometimes you misinterpret the difference between the true prophet of God and, and one who is really a palm reader. You know, and, and let me just make it clear. Because the one who is the prophet of God, the one who speaks in the name of the Lord, has the ability to foretell. What is foretelling? Well, foretelling, as the name implies, is one who speaks of future events, uh, who can release a blessing, who can release a warning, who can release judgment. My goodness. And so when, when it comes to dealing with future things, you have, to be, you, know, you have to be careful because in speaking of the future, you know, it can be a blessing, but it can also be a word of warning. And so it is always predictive. But here's the point with the one who foretells. The one who has the ability to foretell, when that word comes forth, it is dependent on the listener to obey the instructions because always predictive prophecy is conditional. It is conditional upon the listener obeying the instructions or the conditions that would be attached to the prophecy. So, for example, somebody gives you a prophecy that you're going to open many businesses, but then attached to that predictive word will be, you know, should you do this? If you obey the Lord in this area, then the Lord is going to do this. And so with foretelling, it's always dependent upon the response of the listener. But when we look at the word foretell, which is generally the more popular one that is used even now, you would find that foretelling is not so much uh, of, of dealing with things of the future. It is divine revelation that speaks the heart and mind of God that it really comes in a proclamation. So it comes forth as a proclamation. So the prophet comes and speaks literally the very oracles of God, the very heart and mind of God. And let me tell you what happens with forth telling. Because with forth telling now, it comes in the form where you are speaking a current event, that which is of the present, and you go back into the past of an individual in order to deal now with the present. And so you would find with forth telling, it has little to do with that which is to come and much to do with a situation or a condition of the heart as it relates to now. So the one who's forth telling would, would more speak about something that's happening right now in your life and refer to an event of the past that may cause you to be the way you are right now so that your, 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 your literally your very character becomes right-sized as it will and so forth telling is very very important you know even as a prophet of God to to be able to forth tell because that is the one where many people will begin to walk in holiness and righteousness rather than the one who is operating in foretelling but just predicting of the future and so when I come into the second half, I want us to understand, I'm going to go into what is important for us to understand when it comes to identifying the true prophet as opposed to the false prophet. It is critical for us in these last days. Stay tuned, precious ones, because surely I'll be right back. Get your copy of today's message. Email us, info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www.maptt.org. Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on CNC3 every second and fourth Sunday at 8.30 a.m. On TV6 every first, third and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God. 
on the Highway of Holiness. MAP's Miracle, Healing and Teaching Services are every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. The Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7 Welcome back, precious people. Now, I know you are really, really excited that you tuned into today's program because there is just so much you are learning as it pertains to understanding prophecy. Let me just say to you right now, before I go anywhere else, let me let you know that when we are looking at prophecy or when we are seeking a prophet, our motive behind seeking the prophet is very important because you don't want to seek a prophet just to find out about the future. If your intention is just out of curiosity and knowing future events, and I'm going to say to you that it's very easy for the spirit of divination to come upon. Listen to me. It is very easy for the spirit of divination to come upon an individual and that person begins to speak in the carnal realm, begins to speak out of presumption because you yourself are pulling on that which is carnal and not that which is holy. Because prophecy is absolutely holy. It is holiness unto the Lord and it is, and it is of the Lord. But if your motive behind going to a prophet of God is curiosity for the future, then it is a dangerous thing. You see, the reason that we ought to go to a prophet, it's because of our current situation. There's something that we need a confirmation for. There's something that we need. We need a word from God in terms of direction. But, but it must never be out of curiosity because that is carnal. It's a, it's a dangerous place. Now, let me just deal with a matter quickly before we go on. When you are going to a prophet of God or when someone is called into the prophetic, you are called to be a prophet or you are called you know, to, to walk in dimensions of the prophetic. Let me make it clear. The first thing that must be addressed is character. You see, you know, the Bible says that it is by their fruit you shall know them. Now, now let me make this clear because I have seen, I have been around in so many places and, you know, even in nations. And, and I have seen where people prophesy and prophesy and, and, and nobody really cares about the character of the person. And so when I'm speaking about character, what am I really speaking about? Because the character is really the mental and moral quality that is, that is distinctive for that individual. You see, it is, it, is, it is looking at the nature of that person and the motive behind the person. And so even when we look at the Greek word, it is the trying and proving of an individual. Now here's what happens to us. You see, we go to a prophet or we, or we who are in training as a prophet, we don't really care about our character or we don't really care about the, the prophet and the character of that prophet. I don't know how many people, when they're going to a prophet, they really want to seek the Lord to find out what is the character of that person? Is that person walking in holiness? Is that person walking in righteousness? It is something that really is, is not addressed and I'm seeing this, you know, even in the body of Christ. You know, the Bible speaks of Jesus uh, and the Bible says that, that Jesus uh, himself was of no reputation according to Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. But I'll tell you something that Jesus had impeccable character. And so we have to, uh, as, as, as the one who is the example for us, as the prophet of prophets, we have to have impeccable character. No, no, no. We cannot have the wrong motive. So the one who is, is the prophet, our motives must be pure in what we are doing. And so, and so in addressing that, it must be, we must be transparent. Our very, our very personal life, we have to be transparent there. The, our ethics, you know, uh, the, 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 our very integrity, our walk must be transparent. Not only should we be transparent, but absolutely precious ones, we must be trustworthy. You see, if you're going to someone who is a prophet of God, you must be able to trust that person. You must know that that person's walk is a, is a walk of holiness and righteousness. You know, recently I spoke to someone and, and that person, you know, called themselves a prophet of God. And the person that I know by the Spirit of the Lord, I know that person is, is, is fornicating and, 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 you know, living a life that is unholy, really self, uh, living a life of self-exaltation -exalt and self-promotion. And I want to say to you here, uh, let me make this absolutely clear. It is so important 
as a prophet of God to put aside and get rid of the carnality of the ways of man. Otherwise, because of the very thin line between divination and prophecy, you will find yourself operating in divination and think you are prophesying unto the Lord. You are prophesying, thus says the Lord. And I'm telling you, sometimes, uh, not even sometimes, in many cases I have found that people are operating on the divination because their character, their very nature, their, their, their very motive in what they are doing is impure. And therefore, the word that comes forth is an impure word. And you see, we cannot be fooled by, by the, the so-called accuracy of the word. Because let me tell you something, a familiar spirit can speak to anybody about your past. Yeah, there, there are familiar spirits that follow you along your bloodline. And they know your past. They know the past of your parents and the past of your grandparents. And they can speak to someone who, who opens themselves, you know, even into that, de that demonic realm. And begin to speak forth that which is of the past. And very accurate as well. And so you can be easily fooled and manipulated and controlled. Because one of the characteristics of a true prophet of God is that he or she is never manipulative or controlling. You see, the person walks in holiness and the person walks in, in submission and humility as unto the Lord because that person knows that they are only a mouthpiece of God and that they're speaking merely the very heart and mind of God, not their own heart and not their own mind, lest they, they walk and speak in presumption as according to the scriptures. And so, you know, there's so many characteristics of, of that one who is called to, to the prophetic. The person must make sure that they are able to endure you know, a uh, uh, rejection, they, they, my God, because in many cases, the true prophet of God, I've been to places where, <laughs> listen to me, if the only thing they didn't do is throw stones at me. And so you have to be able to face rejection. You have to be able to endure it because, because the true prophet of God, the, the one who really is speaking as unto the Lord has to be able to endure persecution and be able to endure rejection. If you can't handle that, then you better, you, better, you better go before God and let God deal with you in those areas before. That person must be a peaceable person. That person must be one who, who when they speak the word, when they speak for the word, it, it is to bring peace, not to bring contention and strife in the midst of a situation. And so let me say here right now, and I, I need to go on because there's so much I could speak about even into the very character of a prophet of God, a true prophet of God. There's so many little things that you have to look at and, and, and not just go to anybody, not just say, listen, this person is a prophet. I heard them call numbers and I, I heard them call dates and, you know, and, and my God, that person was so accurate. And so you run after that person and you want to hear what that person says. No, no, no. Don't be fooled by giftings. Don't be fooled by that because it's very easy. You can be deceived. You know, I'll, let me, let me say what the scripture says in Luke chapter six, verse 45. Here's what it says. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bring it forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Let me give one more scripture because I'm going to tie the two together. Because the scripture says in Matthew 24 verse 23. Then if anyone says to you look here is the Christ or there. Do not believe it for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the very elect. Look at me, guys. You see, it is very easy to be fooled and be manipulated by the one who is speaking to you and speaking sometimes in the name of the Lord. And so we come now to the point where there are two categories of, of what we call uh, false prophets. There is the false prophet that speaks not in the name of Jesus Christ. And then there is the false prophet that speaks in the name of Jesus Christ. So the one who doesn't speak in the name of Jesus Christ, it is one that is easily identifiable because that one is letting you know that he is speaking out of, out of tea leaves or, or he's speaking out of this, this big crystal. And, the, and that one never calls the name of Jesus Christ. 
And so, but, but in so many cases, I have had Christians come and say, listen, they, they've been to this one, they've been to this palm reader, they've been to this necromancer, they've been to this fortune teller. And the person was so accurate and the person, but, I've, but I explained to you before how easily that person who is a medium can do such a thing. So I'm not going to go so much into the one who is, who is obvious. The one who is obvious is the one who does not speak in the name of Jesus Christ. That one is predicting a future based on what the spirit, the familiar spirit is saying to them. Now here's what happens. So the familiar spirit comes and speaks to the medium and that medium speaks that which was of the past. But here's how the medium is able to speak of things of the future. Simply because uh, the, very, the very familiar spirit will, will speak even into the medium and let that medium know this is the path that I want this person to take. Not that it is the perfect will of God. As a matter of fact, in 100% of the time, it is not the perfect will of God. And so, and so the familiar spirit will speak to the medium and cause that medium to speak words of somebody's future. And guess what? Guess what? If the person listens to the diviner and the fortune teller and the palm reader, it comes to pass. You know why? Because you've exposed yourself to demons. So let's go now even to, to those who speak in the name of Jesus Christ. We have diviners who speak in the name of Jesus Christ, who are called prophets in the world today. They are called prophets of God. They go forth and they speak and they, and they say they're doing this in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. It is the motive of the person. It is the heart condition. It is the character of the person. Because the Bible says by their fruit you will know them. Because it's very easy for, for someone who is, called, who is called a prophet to speak of current events, to speak of future events. It's, it's easy to do this, you know. Let me tell you something. Once you open yourself, it's easy to do it. The problem comes in when the person's character is questionable. Let me give you an example. So if that person now desires money in order to tell you something about your future, then that means the motive of that person who is called the prophet is questionable. And so therefore the word that is going to come forth through that person who is supposed to be the mouthpiece of God, who is supposed to declare the heart and mind of God will be impure. Even if Somebody comes and says, I'm a prophet. Give me a thousand dollars and I'll give you a prophecy. You have to run because I am telling you that person is going to give you a word based on the money that you give to them. That person is not a true prophet of God. That person is a false prophet. That person is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And you need to be very careful and run away from such a one. You see, precious ones, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 1, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So I pray today by the, in the name of Jesus that you operate with a gift of discernment. Ask for discernment to know who is true and who is false so that you will understand. You'll be very careful on who speaks into your life. Let me close by saying to you wonderful people that I love you with the love of Jesus. But much, much more importantly, Jesus loves you. God bless. Get your copy of today's message. Email us, info at maptt.org. That's info at maptt.org. Or write to us, the Ministry for Anointed Prophecy, MAP, P.O. Box 6057, Diego Martin, Trinidad, West Indies. You can listen to many of Minister Charmaine's messages or watch her on YouTube when you visit the website www maptt.org Messages such as Carriers of His Glory, a four-part series, Spiritual Gravity, The Power of Faith, and Resurrection Power. Be sure to watch the program Highway of Holiness on CNC3 every second and fourth Sunday at 8.30 a.m. on TV6 every first, third, and fifth Sunday at 7 a.m. Check your local listings and tune in to this station as MAP brings more words and messages about the power and glory of God on the Highway of Holiness. MAP's Miracle, Healing and Teaching Services are every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. The Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. Amos 3.7